you've seen how basic the build up is of this flat pack, but we're going to slow the clip right down and I'm going to take you through all the steps to show you how simple and easy it is to assemble this flat pack. Now the first tip is to assemble this flat pack in the final location where you want the cupboard to be. It's very difficult to move around otherwise. Start off by opening up your box and removing all the panels. Locate that instruction manual because that's going to help you identify which panel is which. Once you've got all your panels out of the box, it's a good idea to group all the like panels together. You'll see I've got three panels here, all exactly the same. Then I like to get some masking tape and number up each one of the panels according to the numbering in the instruction manual. It's going to make the assembly so much easier. I can see panels number one, eight and two are all the same and that is the top, the base and the main shelf. So I'm going to label these ones with one, eight and two. There are three rails. We have the wide rail, which is panel number five. Then we have the front rail, which has the white surface on it. That's panel number six. And then we have the back rail, which is panel number seven. The next panels that I like to identify are the two side panels. Now, both these panels are symmetrical. They're the big, long, tall ones. We have a natural on the inside and a white on the other side. Now, we have a left and a right, so it's important that you do get these the right way around. An easy way to identify is the small holes are to accommodate the hinges, so they will be on the front side, as well as the white cover strip will be on the front side, where it will be bare on the back which is top and which is bottom. You'll see their large holes are at the top and the bottom holes you'll see are slightly elevated and that's gonna take the bottom base shelf. This will be panel number three, which is the left hand side. Therefore, the other panel will be panel number four, which is the right hand side. Now, our last two panels are panels number nine and 10. Easy to identify because they have the recess to accommodate the hinges. These two doors are exactly the same. Let's label them up nine and 10. With all the panels labeled, it's now a good idea to sort and organize your hardware. We have our hinges, our director screws, panel pin nails, wooden dowels, hanger rail clips, Allen key, 16 millimeter nails, nail and anchors, 30 millimeter screws. And we have some white cover stickers to cover the heads of the director screws. As for the tools that you're going to be using, an Allen key comes in a kit, but you'll also need a medium-sized Phillips screwdriver and a hammer. Before we get started with the assembly, we need to do a little bit of prep work, and that means inserting some of the dowels into the panels. We're gonna be inserting dowels into the rails. That's panels five, six, and seven, and it needs a dowel on both sides. Panels one, eight, and two take two dowels in the center on each side. Everything's prepped, and it's now time to start the assembly. There's a few different ways that you can assemble it. A lot of people like to assemble it flat on the ground and then pick it up and put it into place. It can be quite heavy and quite awkward to do that. Alternatively, you can build it from the base up in its position all the way up to the top. Just leave a little bit of a gap on the back to allow the panel pins to be knocked in and then you can shuffle it into position. That's the way we're gonna be assembling it. So I'm gonna need panels three, six, and seven. Pull out panel number three. Keep it away from the wall slightly because you need to get access to the outside edge. And then bring in panel number seven, which is the back panel. Line up that dowel plug into that hole and hold that into position. Then take your director screw onto the other side of the bottom hole and drive that all the way into that panel. We're gonna pop in the front rail section. Remember, white on the outside. Line up the dowel with the hole, and then pop a director screw on the other side to secure it. When you are working with those higher panels, it can be very difficult on your own, so make use of a friend and get that extra pair of hands involved. This is the top rail. You want to make sure that the white cover strip is facing down. We're gonna hold that up into position, locate it into the peg hole, push it in tight, and secure it with a director screw on the other side, while I hold it in position. Our next panel is panel number one, which is our top panel. Make sure that you have the white cover strip facing outside. Lift it up into position, line it up with the dowel holes, and then secure it from the other side with the director screw. With that top panel secured and your helper taking that extra weight load, we can now pop in the bottom panel, which is panel number two, then followed with the middle panel, which is panel number eight. 
With your helper taking the load of the weight of those shelves, it's now time to install the last side panel. And that'll take the weight of those shelves and give him a bit of a break. Now this is where you've got a little bit of a juggling act to line up all the pegs into their holes. Now remember, nothing needs to be forced. Everything does go in easily. You might just need to jiggle it a little bit to get each location of each peg into position. That's why the spare pair of hands is critical. That's your structure complete. It's now time to pop on the backing board using your panel pin nails. When knocking your panel pins, make sure it is in the center of the timber. Too close to the edge, it is gonna burst out the side and damage the side of the panel. And then evenly space your nails all the way around to secure that back panel. Once you've got your pins around the outer edge of the first panel, take your little joiner piece and just slot it into position. Then you can slide the other panel into position and it slots in like a tongue and groove locking. With the back panel in position, before you add the additional weight of the doors, now's a good time to get the wardrobe into its final location. Our structure's in location, it's now time to pop on our hanging rail. First of all, we're gonna be screwing in our little rail holders with the 16 millimeter screws. Line up the holder to the pre-drilled screw and then screw that into position. Now we need to add on our doors to the unit. I find it much easier putting the hinges onto the doors first and then we'll hold them into position and secure them to the wardrobe. Take the first hinge, line it up into position and you'll see the pre-drilled holes to accommodate the 16 millimeter screws. First hinge is in, two more on this door and another three on the other door. The hinges are on the doors, we now need to attach it to the main wardrobe. Now this is where you need that spare pair of hands again to help you hold that door while you screw those hinges into position. You'll see there are pre-drilled holes that we mentioned earlier, which lines those hinges up perfectly for you. You'll notice on the hinges that there are two adjusting screws. This helps with the alignment of the doors. The screw at the back adjusts the door position from the cupboard, whilst the screw at the front helps with the alignment between the two doors to ensure that they are square and square to the cupboard. As I open and close this door, I can feel and hear that it's rubbing on the front edge, so therefore I need to bring this hinge slightly out and then I can recheck it. Now exactly the same process with the second door. To disguise the heads of the director screws, take the white cover stickers and then just pop them directly over each one of the director screw heads. Once you're happy with the final position of your cupboard, it's now important to secure it to the wall with the nail and anchors. That's the structure complete. That really was a simple kit to assemble. All that's left to do is to pop down to builders and choose the handles of your choice, drill in some holes, and then attach your handles, and you're complete. A great piece of furniture added to your home. If you enjoyed this clip, like it, share it, you can also subscribe to the Builders Fan YouTube channel. There's a range of DIYs and assembly how-tos just like this for you to be inspired, get to Builders, and get it done.